Rick is um, with Whimsy Stitches, and we love their bags. You see him at all the big shows like SAF and um, the other ones that I can't think of right now because I'm on the spot. <laughs> but you see behind him, look at all his fabric, Cindy and Debbie and all you guys that sew Christine. Look at all that fabric stacked up. Anyway, so he's based out of New Orleans, Nolens, Louisiana. Nolens. Nolens. New Orleans. New Orleans. All right, so we have 10 questions. Actually, there are 13, but I had to have an extra few. These are the same two questions that I'm going to ask anybody else if we do this again. And it looks like we may do it next week with a Big Sky Yarn Company. Nice. So here goes. Half are somewhat serious, and the other half are not. Okay. Let's start with serious. What led agree. you to start Whimsy Stitches? Um, Did you hear me? Yes, I learned how to knit about seven years ago, um, and I went to a knit night, knit group kind of a thing, and somebody had a cute little bag made out of fabric, and I says, oh, that's cute, and so I said, oh, I could make those, whipped up a few, and then all of a sudden started, people started asking, will you make me one? I'll pay you, and that led to a couple more and a couple more, and then I was like, well, I want something I can see with it rather than have to open it all the time. So that led to me developing the little clear one. And believe it or not, just the other day, I look, was looking at old pictures in my phone and stuff, and it came across one of the very first clear bags that I ever made. And it'll be five years um, next month. So okay. it was five years ago that I made my first bag and I started selling them that fall and that's when I opened, well, technically opened my Etsy shop in the fall the year before, but I didn't actually start selling in my Etsy shop until the fall of um, 2015, or actually the, the summer of 2015. And, um, and then by 2016, I, the summer of 2016, I was full-time. Quit my job, did this full-time. So I had the fabric. <laughs> Well, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't this intense, but, you know, five years ago, maybe it was, oh, maybe a quarter of that. And then over the years, mm -hmm. it's, it keeps, it just keeps growing. So things get shuffled and used and moved and, you know, so um, that's kind of where it all started. And that's, you know, I honestly, to tell you the truth, I've never, I've never had a more rewarding business job, whatever you want to call it than this. Um, I, you know, I started off in technology. My background is in, is in IT, and I did that for nearly 20 years, and that was the most, that was the worst career I ever had. I don't think I was ever meant to be corporate. I don't think I was ever meant to, you know, help people, like, you know, figure out how to use a mouse, even though I never did that, <laughs> but I would always get those questions. You know, my background is in business IT, so I was solving business, you know, problems through IT by integrating things. So long story short, hated it, um, made great money, but, you know, money isn't everything. So nope. happiness is more important. Mm -hmm. And mom, my mom is my biggest influence in sewing. So it was thorn for her. I probably wouldn't be addicted to this in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I wouldn't own, you know, three, four, five sewing machines if it weren't for her. Because, you know, she shares the same addiction. She's a quilter. And I dabbled in quilting for a while. It just takes too long. Mm -hmm. This is this is faster gratification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, quilting takes way too long. It's too fiddly. <laughs> Should also show them he is making masks to sell too. Um, yeah. You know, you got to change with the times. So. This is just a sample. I just do the kind of the, the, the two layer of fabric with the elastic bands around the ears. Um, there's a few in the shop right now, um, but they sell very, very quickly. Um, but I have stacks and stacks of new ones that I'm coming up with um, that will be heading to the shop real soon. Fun. This is little cats. And of course, there'll be little dogs. And what else do I have? Oh, I'll have some fun little Flor de Lis stuff too, because we all like that. And more cats. This one has yarn balls. 
and they're reversible. So you try to marry them with something fun or plain on the backside so that you can wear them either way. Some bird houses. It's the new fashion um, accessory. Yes, and it's going to be for a while. I asked and then, if it would be dazzle, some of them. <laughs> and then I have some, you know, a little more masculine. This is like nautical. Oh, and then yeah. of course, I'm a, this is this is like woods, like almost not really camouflage, but it's like woods leaves and That's stuff. So you smart know? to make them for men too. And this this is like military because my um, my sister in law asked for that, and I have to have that fabric. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember having something military on my shelf that I never used for a bag. So. That's what I'm basically doing now. I mean, other than knitting, I'm sewing masks. Well, that leads me to my second question. Yes. And that is, what is your current whip work in progress? Ah, my current whip is the Stephen West painting bricks shawl. And I and y'all, I bought one of his kits. It's not that I don't have any yarn, but it it's is. hard to see, but because it's getting big but it, it you know of course it's once it's blocked it's going to be gorgeous but this is kind and of the color it reminds me of mosaic or stained glass yeah mosaic stained glass this is the pattern this is what it'll look like eventually so it's 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 huge you can see how big that is i mean stephen west is not a he's a tall guy so his arm span is you know six and a half feet um so that's what I'm working on. And actually it's brought back my knitting mojo. Good. And he also dyed the yarn to make that. Yes, so I had some he kits. Also has I, yarn. I'm thinking about doing more kits because I've had a few inquiries about maybe a few more kits. So that's, I got some yarn in the other day. So I was, you know, crossing my fingers it would get here from overseas, um, from the UK, which is where my distributor and that comes is with from. If you buy one. <laughs> Yes, little little, marker. My little rainbows. Okay, so let's get to the next one since it's question number three. What is one thing that you hate that most people love? Oh, what is the one thing that I hate that most people love? Mm -hmm. Is this a trick question? No, I'm going to tell you mine is movies. Oh, wow. Oh, my Don't God. To the movies. I'm not a real fan. Um, uh, I don't have an answer for that. Um, what? I don't. I really don't. I mean, I can't think of anything that, like, uh, that I love that, well, that. I don't I love oranges. Like. Uh-huh. Well, most people like oranges, don't they? No, I know that's what I'm saying. I don't like them. Oh. I don't love them. Oh. Mm -mm. Um, oh, okay. I dislike uh, eggplants. Well, I think everybody dislikes eggplant. <laughs> eggplants <laughs> more. <laughs> I don't know about that. We can take a poll. How many people actually like eggplant? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. See? Oh, she loves eggplant. She's giving me the eye. She's giving me the uh -huh. Christine eye. Uh huh. See? There is. I mean, like, you know, um, I guess that's not a good question. So we're going to have another question three. That's why I have 13 questions. I mean, I have another answer, but that will reserve for cocktail hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Where are you going to go first after restrictions are lifted? <sighs> um, oh God. Out to dinner with Garrett. Where though? Where? Because you've had oh, 45 uh, days to decide. That's what I tell Kevin. When we go out to eat, you better know where because we've had 45 days to think about I don't. I think it'll be longer than 45 days, but it'll, it'll probably be Muriel's in the French Quarter here. It's my favorite restaurant in New Orleans. Mm, what do they serve? everything but mostly like a cajun creole kind of fusion thing um a lot of good down home kind of you know stuff um 
it, just about anything. Lots of seafood, lots of meats, you know, everything. So. Okay, so we'll go to a question maybe that you can answer. So what's your favorite breakfast cereal? I don't eat cereal. I dislike cereal. There's, there's your answer to the other question. There you go. <laughs> I despise, I actually despise cereal. I can't, I can't do it. Okay. Never could. What's an activity that never looks cool that people do, but it doesn't look cool? It doesn't look cool? Mm -hmm. um, 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 uh, wearing tights all the time. I was going with eating a banana, but yeah, never looks mm. cool. Okay. Okay. Oh, here's one I know you can get. If a song played every time you entered the room, what would it be? Mm. Every time I entered the room. <laughs> mm. Someone else could answer that question. <laughs> we should have guest appearances. You know, <laughs> the little box is coming up. Um, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. I really honestly couldn't tell you. So... Can I answer that a different way? I love country music, and that's primarily what I listen really? to. Really? Yes, I'm a country music person. Always have been. So. I'm trying to think of a good one for that. I'll come up with it in a minute. Um, it'll be a, it'll be a classic like George Strait or something like that, you know. The chair. Maybe. <laughs> that's that chair one's funny. Okay. Do you have any phobias? Oh, yes, yeah, snakes. 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 Snake well, phobia. You know, yes, yes. You, the, snakes and me. No, 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 no. Not gonna happen. Can't. Do you have no. any collections other than fabric? Oh yes, I do. Um, does anybody know what Department Fifty Six villages are? I don't. I can't see anybody. So one I have person. No idea. <laughs> Okay, well, Department 56 villages are like, you, you know, like uh, Michael's and Walmart, they sell like the little Christmas houses that you can display. Mm -hmm. And it used to be really, really popular um, a few years ago, and it's kind of dwindled down. But there's a company called Department 56, and they make a lot of other stuff too, or at least they used to a lot of household kind of, you know, display accessories and tchotchkes and things. Um, but they're also part of like, you know, the UNESCO figurines and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyway, they make the little Christmas villages in lots of different like themes, North Pole, Alpine, Dickens Village. Is that so, one the company that I saw makes a tattoo part for a Christmas village? Probably. Mm -hmm. They, they've made, <laughs> they've made a lot of things. They made, they make, ver they make versions like for Harley Davidson, McDonald's, all kinds of things. Um, you know, anyway, there used to be really, really big, and I used to be very much into that, and my attic is full of that stuff, and even though I have nowhere to display it in my house, well, if I clean this room out, I could display it all in here, but that's not going to happen, so, yes. That's your collection? Yep. Okay. Um, what's the best room in your house, and why? Remember, this is clean. This is a family, family, friendly, family, friendly show. <laughs> my kitchen. I would see that face. Yeah. My kitchen. I love to bake. I love to cook. So, you know, it keeps me occupied. And what I like was the thing you posted the other day that looked so good you made? I don't know. I posted a lot of things. Before the cupcakes. Before the cupcakes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh, the um, the blueberry, the lemon blueberry cream cheese pound cake. That was delicious. Oh yeah, yes. It it looked it. I gained five pounds looking at it. <laughs> do you have any pets or a spirit animal? I do have pets. I have one pet, and it's a cat, and she's somewhere around. She usually doesn't come in here. She usually she usually doesn't even visit me. I'm in here all day long. She comes through here maybe once a day. Otherwise, she's never in here, which is great because that leaves all my stuff alone. What's her name? Her name is T Kitty. 
Tea Kitty. Tea How Kitty. Did, and what was that you, short you, for? Um, it's French. It's apostrophe T I T Kitty. So small kitty. Oh. Yeah, petite kitty. Cute. It mm -hmm. should be French living in New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah. Well, she's from here, so she gets a little more Frenchy name. Okay, I have just one more. And I think I asked you more than 10, actually. I, I haven't been I counting. Count. Well, you wrote them down. What would you be doing? What would you be doing if you weren't doing this? Um, if I weren't doing this, I probably would still be teaching in college. What subject? Technology. Uh, information, technology. Mm -hmm. When I first moved to New Orleans, I taught at Tulane University for six years. So I was an adjunct professor oh. for six years. Part time, you know, that's what adjunct Ooh. means. Um, but yeah. And you love that. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the students more than anything. Cool. Because I got new well, students every year. <laughs> that's the grand total of my get to know you better questions. So you okay. helped me cross a few off the list that just didn't work. Um, <laughs> okay. Maiden voyage into inside the yarn studio, which I, we, we have some of his bags, not very many on our website. This website's on Etsy. Yes. You can either go to, you can go to whimsystitches.com, right? That's correct. To get to your website? Yep, right. whimsystitches.com, okay, so, and that'll lead you to wherever you need to go. Okay, so I'm going to open it up for questions. I hope you guys have been thinking about some. And here you go. Hello, everybody. Hi. Okay, let me switch my view to see who comes up with, so I can see them. Okay. Who'd like to go first? Anybody have a question? <laughs> now, Cindy, can you see Cindy, Rick? It says Cynthia. If she, if she talks, I can see her because I'm on my tablet, so I can't see everybody at once. Oh, I'm right here. You see her? Yes, she hi, Cynthia. is a fairly famous hand, well, a very famous hand quilter. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I've ever hooked you up yeah. or got you two to meet each other but yeah she does a lot of work in nice. your in your book going to be published soon um i hope so um, <laughs> who knows with this virus thing when it will go oh but i am salivating over your collection there behind you rick I'm thank like, you wow look at what you have and yours is so different than mine because i do a lot of reproduction Right. You, my mom would love probably your collection because my mom is a very much a reproductions, 1930s, right. you know, very muted kind of a style. Yeah, tra um, traditional, more traditional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. more traditional. So, yeah, but I, I do enjoy your, your looking at your collection there. So Thank you. I appreciate very that. Very neat. Very neat. I love your style of bags. They're really Thank great. You. I have one, you know, that's just really awesome. So, Thank um, you. Now, how fast can you get those big bags to Christie's shop? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, we just have, I just have to do them. So. Okay. I've got one. And, okay. Shoot. So, Shoot. Um, you know, my, my mother, got me into all kinds of crafting just as soon as I was capable physically of doing any of that kind of thing. Was that the same sort of thing with your mom? You just kind of got into all the crafting as she, because she was doing it? Yes and no. Um, my mom sewed like all the time. Growing up, there was always, first of all, there was always sewing going on in our house. And so my mom would sew clothes. She sewed a lot of clothes yeah. when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and not only for us boys, because I have two older brothers, but she also sewed clothes for herself and for her mom. So she was always whipping something up. And then my father's sister actually lived with us as well. She was deaf. And um, so she lived with us full time and she did a lot of like seamstress work and like upholstery, like, you know, slip covers for 
sofas and that kind of thing. Um, and so I was always around fabric and always around sewing. And of course, you know, being the youngest of, of three boys, you know, I was, I was the special one. So, um, you know, I required more attention. <laughs> And the last thing I wanted to do was go outside and like, you know, play baseball or hockey or any of those things. I did, but I did more crafting than anything else. So. I have a good question. Go for it. Um, other than knitting and sewing, are there any other hobbies that you enjoy doing? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, other in the craft community. Is there any other crafts that you like doing other than sewing and knitting? Um, I, you know, not much anymore. Um, other than cooking and baking, though, if you want to consider those, you know, other hobbies, there's certainly hobbies of mine is to, you know, is to do that. Um, but I mean, I used to do more things. I used to do, um, I used to do more of more like, you know, floral crafts and that kind of thing, um, you know, wreaths and different things, you know, I'd have a wreath for every, diff every different holiday of the year. I've, I've like, that has gone like way down on the list for me now. Um, I just don't get as much enjoyment out of it. And, and it isn't because, it isn't because I don't like doing it because I still enjoy doing that. It's just that um, I don't enjoy some of the stores <laughs> to go where do you buy this stuff now? <laughs> So. I have a question. Okay, yes, go ahead. Shoot. What does your t-shirt say? Oh, it's the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Aww. <laughs> I wore that just for y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Smart man. Good job. Well, it's it's. I've been there many, 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 many times over the last twenty years. And you take um, a mini vacation when you come our way too, don't you? I do. Some in the fall, usually I'm between North Carolina and Tennessee, so I um I usually spend a few days up in the mountains there, or, and you know that kind of thing. So I do enjoy it. I have a question. Do you attend yeah. retreats and do, what fiber festivals do you go to? Um, retreat wise, yes, I do attend retreats. Um, I used to attend the Into the Wool Retreat, which is in Crossville every year. Um, I did that for a couple of years, two, three years, and then um, and then I stopped going to that one because of timing, because um, got moved to late September and that didn't work for me. Um, but I also attend um, the SSK Retreat in July in Nashville. Um, so I would vend there too, so that helps, you know, that I'm a vendor as well. Um, yeah. And that's still scheduled for this July. We'll see what happens. Cross our fingers that, you know, life will go on. Um, and fiber fests, um, I do several. Um, uh, near near y'all is, um, I usually do fiber in the borough, which is in early November um, in Murfreesboro. You guys haven't been um, to fiber in the borough. You should make the trip. It really is a good yeah. little show. Except I, I won't be there this year because I have a wedding to attend that weekend. So. Except maybe not this year because Rick's not going to be there. <laughs> There's other vendors. There's lots of other great I people. I do <laughs> SAP. I do SAP every year in Asheville. I love that show. Um, mm -hmm. That's a great festival to go to. Mm -hmm. um, oh my goodness. What other one? I mean, I've done Stitches Atlanta, um, DFW Fiber Fest, which is in Dallas every spring. Um, my mind is a blank right now, but you know, those are the bigger ones. <laughs> I know that my, thank you. The one show that we did do, we did as a, as a store, we did um, in Piper and the Borough. Mm -hmm. but I just can't imagine a life where I have to put together a booth and take down a booth over and over and over again. Yeah, but your life is different. You own a store and you kind of have it yes. set up all the time. I don't have a store. I have an online presence and then I come home from a show and put everything back up neatly in shelves where nobody can see them. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I think I would hate putting it up and taking it down. Um, you get used to it. You you hate it the first three yeah. times and then after after that you're like, eh, it's just part of life. Cause we did it the one time and mm -hmm. I think we left a large carpet in the dumpster after that too. <laughs> yes, we did. 
<laughs> so how do you choose your fabrics? What, what do you um, do for your fabric? I'm I'm a novelties and bright person, so I'm gonna I'm gonna steer myself more towards color pattern, um, but novelties. I mean, if it's got a cute animal on it, I'm all over that. So um, that's usually what I go to. I mean, but I do, I do other things too. I mean, you know, like for Dallas, I was doing these blue bonnet bags. Oh. So this has cowboy boots and blue bonnets and wildflowers. Yeah. And this is my, this is my large bag. And what I've done um, to it for this year is I've went ahead and put a crossbody strap on it instead of just the handle. So moving yeah. forward, moving forward, these are all going to have the larger adjustable crossbody mm -hmm. strap so that you can, you know, because mm. I've been noticing people are shoving a lot of stuff in these bags. <laughs> I know, so, money mind to be clear. For those people that like the big ones, um, I, I do plain kind of stuff too. This is one of the, um, this is more of a um, kind of a, a tartan plaid. Oh, it's yeah. a homespun fabric. It's not, it's not anything special, but it's, I did it on the diagonal. Um, and then I paired it with a denim, just a plain denim fabric. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it, I, you know, there's lots of different things. So it, it all just depends on my mood of the day, what fabric I go to. Um, you know, um, but I, I will say, I would say 90% of what I do is brightly colored. I'm sure it would, I think I would love pairing the fabrics. I would love that part. It's fun. I mean, yeah. when you have like a mini store in your house, it makes it easy. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I, I, I have my go-to places where I get like plain fabrics, you know, a lot of the fabrics that I might use for like the bottoms of the bag, you know, where mm -hmm. I, I do kind of the two different colors. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some bags are easier. They're just one fabric. So, um, but it's fun. It's, you know, it gives me something to do while it snows. What is your absolute favorite, favorite your, uh, fabric store? <sighs> oh, geez. Yeah. Um, and where are you getting your fabric now that Quilted Owl closed? Well, Quilted Owl, it was a great shop, believe it or not. It was literally three blocks from my house. Right. I, mean, I could walk to that store every day if I wanted to. Um, they had a very small selection of bright colors. Right. Um, they had a bigger selection of batiks and then traditional fabrics. Um, but I would go there. They knew me well, um, and I would definitely shop there. But there's another shop here in town. It's called Maisami Fabrics or Maisami Quilts. Um, and I know Denise, she's the owner. I know her very well. Um, she tends to have a much more bright colors and novelties and collections of things. And that is, that's all about me. So I do shop there very, very often. Um, and she knows me well. I do go to Joann's. Um, we have, you know, Joann's here in, in the area. So I do go there mostly, mostly for, you know, the, the, the coordinatings and the solids and this, you know, semi kind of stuff. It, some novelty stuff. It all just depends on what they have. How, um, much, how much do you usually buy, Rick, at a time? It all depends on what bags that it's intended for. Right. So, I, so a lot of times I'll go and I'll have an I'll already envision what this bag is going to be or what I want to make. Um, but I have a plan usually. I mean, if it's a specialty type fabric that I know would work in many different size bags or style bags. I'll buy enough yardage to do zippered bags, clear bags, notion pouches. That way I'll have enough. And usually if that's the case, anywhere from, you know, anywhere from four to eight yards, it just depends on what they have. So, and sometimes that determines how much I buy too. So if they only have X amount, guess what? I'm getting X amount done. Right. And, and, and do you ever do special bags where if I had my own fabric and I wanted a bag done, would you do it? I have done that in the past. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, when I wasn't, I, to be honest with you, I would probably entertain doing it again right now only because, you know, production is kind of a slow down pace. 
um, you know, you can always get in touch with me through my website or through my Etsy or through Instagram or Facebook or any of those places. Um, or, you know, or Christy, just contact her and she'll, she'll give you that, you know, my contact info if you don't have it and we can work something out. Okay. Okay, but you didn't really answer the question. I'm talking about like, Black Mountain. I have not been there since they opened. Yeah. But I get a little giddy at the idea of going there. That's the kind of store I'm talking about where you just go, I can't wait. Oh, you mean fabric stores? Yes, your very favorite. <sighs> oh my God, really? Um, <laughs> to be truthful, I mean, it's not really a store. It's a, it's a series of stores in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> um, there, there are warehouse, there are fabric warehouses in Dallas on Harry Hines Boulevard, not too far from, um, the, um, Dallas Love Field Airport. And there's this, there's a little area there and they've got just warehouse after warehouse after warehouse after warehouse of fabrics and distributors and wholesalers and, and some sell just upholstery type stuff. Some sell just like bridal and gown material, but there's, there's a few gems in that whole group. And yes, I get giddy when I go there because it's like it's a tre it's like a treasure trove. You don't know what you're gonna find, and then when you find that one special fabric, and it's like, oh my god, they've got two bolts of it. You're like, <gasps> that's what I'm talking about. There's your answer. Yes. Yep. Have you ever thought into, about moving into things other than project bags, like the needle keepers and things like that? I've been thinking, I've been thinking about it. Um, I really haven't. The only, honestly, the only thing I would ever consider probably doing as far as a needle thing is one of these like simple fold out things where you can just, you know, slip your needles in that kind of thing. Um, there, there are so many of my friends that make better versions of this um, that I really honestly wouldn't even consider it. Um, because they do it so much better because that's what they focus on. Um, Grace's Cases is a really dear friend of mine and she makes the best, the absolute best zippered form fitting for your interchangeable needles and that kind of thing. Check her out. She's on Etsy as well. Grace's Cases. Um, she's a little pricey, but you pay what you get for. Um, and to be honest with you, you invest in one or two of them and I think they're set for life. You, you, you don't have to look anywhere else. Um, Erin Lane bags. She makes a lot of meal cases. I own two of them of hers. I just love them. They're, they're intuitive and ingenious. And I'm like, you know, go for it. Um, because I also dye yarn now two little over two years. Um, and I am a single, I'm a single man shop. I do everything here. So there's only so much time in the day. And that's why you pick and choose, you pick and choose what you want to make, what you want to do. And what's your favorite part? What's your favorite part of the process of dyeing yarn? Putting the colors together and seeing what happens. And lately I've been kind of dyeing, I've been like adding different dyes together to come up with my own colors um, and seeing what comes of it. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. <laughs> so There are there are happy mistakes. There are there are happy mistakes um, and and then there are mistakes mistakes that you're like oh we're just gonna add a bunch of black <laughs> dye to this and we'll call it a day. Because <laughs> I think that you you should get the most improved award for yarn dyeing because okay, you started it and then because you just it just. You started doing it when it was a good, but then kaboom, it was great in a very short amount of time. Well, I think it's because it's meant to I be used, a compliment. I appreciate that. And um I've refined my skill a little bit and I've kind of learned and limped along, you know, and you know, with everything, there's always a learning curve to everything. Everything has a learning curve. Sewing, baking, dyeing you know, literally dying too. Um, and 
you learn your tips and tricks and techniques and you find out what works for you. And you know, every area of the country is different. The water's different. The quality of the water's different. Temperatures are different. Um, I die in my laundry room, which is kind of outside. And if any of you have ever been to New Orleans in the summertime, it's hot, really, really hot muggy. <laughs> and muggy. So, you know, that changes things. It changes your mood. It changes what you do and how you do it. Um, I know, so when I get I, really moody when I'm hot. <laughs> yes, I get very moody when I'm hot too. And um, I have to prepare myself mentally to go out there and do it. So I've already planned to do, to do some Saturday, I mean, not Saturday, Sunday and Monday, because those are going to be the coolest days this coming week. Cool. Now, do you have a favorite color when you dye that you just tend to always go toward? Um, you know, I'm just looking at what's on my shelves, and it's a smorgasbord right now. Um, lately, lately, there's been a lot of spring, you know, colors coming out of me. Um, this is the Texas Blue Bonnets colorway, so, you know, lots mm -hmm. of springy kind of things. Um, I'm finding that there's always going to be bright colors. Of course, my rainbow stuff is always going to be around. Um, and then I totally love doing matchy matchy stuff where I do the yarn that kind of matches the bag. Oh, it's um, so cute. So there's probably going to be more of that because every time I pull a fabric and I'm like, ooh, this would make a great colorway. And I immediately said, oh, I have to do a colorway like this. You know, and then this came along and I was like, well, that's kind of same area, except these are more, you know, I'm not quite neon, but very close to neon colors. Um, this. Well, that's the interesting that you get your colorway inspiration from your fabrics. This colorway was inspired by this bag and this. So I know it's kind of hard to see, but this, I mean, it's almost a direct match. So that's yeah that's kind of where where i'm getting that inspiration from um just actually ordered and received some um cotton linen and linen um merino fi uh, blends and i'm going to experiment with that and see how that goes i love linen yarn i love cotton yarn I love knitting with those things. I love wearing those things. And I'm like, why am I not dyeing those things? It's a different process because it's there, there are different dyes that you have to get for cotton and plant-based fibers rather than animal-based. So we're gonna see what happens. There's gonna be a learning curve there, but um, we'll see. Do you ever dye with it? The, the bugs and the, what's the name of those bugs, Lauren? The bugs? What do you mean dying with bugs, like crushed bugs? Yes. That's not going to happen. <laughs> that cabin boy. Cochlear. Coca, coca something. Yeah, they're, it's ground up roaches. I'm sorry. Yeah. Not going to happen. All it's, those, it's, all those. red. It makes a really nice red, and it's the way red was made for years. Mm. Cochineal, that's it. Cochineal. If I, can't, if I can't pronounce it, I won't use it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cochineal. On your bag that you made with the um, longer strap, the large bag that you yes, showed. Yes, thank you. There, there'll be more of that. There's, all, there, there's only one in the shop right now, but I'm, there, the plans are to do more of that kind of style with the with the shoulder strap um uh, you know the rest of this year will there be pockets on the inside that oh that we, that bag does have a zippered pocket on the inside i'm considering adding a um a pattern pocket as well i was gonna so, say yeah you know because there's been there's been feedback about that and i'm like okay okay i give in <laughs> that would be great that would be awesome to have. Thank you. You, you know, it's it, when you when you do something for a while and you do it a certain way, you get used to doing it, and it's like you you cut the fabric, and it's like you, and then it's like all of a sudden, oh, I've got to I've got to adapt and change, and I've got to change everything, and it's like, 
you know, sometimes you, you, you know, and then the deadlines are looming and you're like, okay, do I want to change now? Or when do I want to make this change? So right now is a great time for me to say, okay, it's time to make some changes. What's the dimension on your notion pouch? And do you do anything where you have a large bag and a matching pouch for your notes, notions that would come together? Um, I've done that before where I sell the larger bags in a notions pouch. They weren't big sellers. And a lot of people would ask me, can I just buy the bag, but not the notions pouch? Or can I just buy the bat in the notions pouch and not the bag? So I would wind up breaking the sets apart. So it was like, ah, so sometimes I do, um, the size on my notions pouch. If you just wait one second, um, uh, I've, I've, I've made a couple of different kind of styles and, I've gone back and forth, but I think I've pretty much settled to to go back to the original um, style Notions pouch, which is kind of like the mini, mini version of my my zippered um, my zippered bag because it works the best. It's a small enough bag to fit a small, you know, amount of um, larger accessories like scissors and maybe a ruler or um, you know tape measure. A, a packet or a little box of stitch markers and still zip up and it's small enough to throw in your in your larger bag um this is roughly the opening at the top is roughly seven inches and it is about five inches tall so um and the bottom is has that box kind of you know the box cut so it'll stand well fun fact for you guys um, <laughs> Rick did his very first trunk show at our shop. Yeah, you are my guinea pig. Hey. Mm -hmm. I forgot about I that know. just now. I know. We were going to do two this year, remember? Uh, well, <laughs> July and October. We so still we're can. still, we'll cross our fingers and, you know, we'll be wearing masks, but, and social distancing <laughs> still. Perhaps. I don't know. Do you ever make the Notions bags in the clear? No. Um, I've had a lot of requests about that. And I, I, the reason why I don't is I like my bags to pretty much be finished inside and out so that there's no raw edges on the inside of the bag. Mm -hmm. um, and to do the clear and not have raw edges on the inside of the bag is very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. And I still, I'm, I'm, you know, if I ever come up with some solution for that, I will certainly put it out there. Um, but no, not yet. Okay. Yeah, you can make them completely clear with no fabric. True, but then that would be sewing on vinyl, on vinyl, on vinyl all day long, and that's right. not fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a fabric guy. You can also guy. get something like that very cheap. Yeah. You can. You can. I would. It would cost a lot more for me than it would be to order it from people that are just churning that stuff out really cheaply. Right. Um, you know, and honestly, it wouldn't make me happy to sit there and make clear bags all day long. Yeah. 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 You know. Gotcha. So. Did you grow up in New Orleans? I did not. Um, I've been here 20 years, um, but prior to that, I grew up on Long Island in New York. Wow. Where I was there for... I'm, I'm a Long Island girl. Where about? Are you? Yeah. I was in Spionk, Remsenburg. Okay. That's a little yep. farther road. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, out on the east end on the south shore. Right. I lived in uh, Nesconset for a while, but originally from New Hyde Park. Oh, wonderful. That's more North Shore, Nassau County? Kind of, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, my um, my dearest college friend is in Merrick. She's um, in Merrick, which is kind of more South Shore of Nassau County by Garden City, close to Garden City, Hempstead, that area. Right. Um, a good this is Rick Warren. Ah, pretty. Very pretty. The mm. painting, the painting, um, Painting bricks. Bricks. <laughs> nice. Isn't it moving quite a lot, uh, moving along very quickly? 
Yes, and I will tell you that he has a very reasonable price. I, I mean, it, it, I make no, I'm making no money off this, and I don't care. But he is one of the best re price points for this kit online. If you wanted well, to do it. I mean, honestly, I keep my overhead low, so you know. I mean, I don't have employees. I don't have a, you know, warehouse or, you know, commercial space that I'm paying for. So, you know, I try to keep my prices, you know, on par for what people are willing to pay. Besides your own yarn, what's mm -hmm. one of your favorite yarn brands? <gasps> oh, my God. Trick question. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have a huge stash because prior to like doing my own yarn I have amassed quite a quite a collection of yarn and um I for a time there I was buying a lot of self-striping yarn from everybody um but certainly mustache yarns is one of my favorite self-stripers along with um Erin from Rock and String Yarns she's in Kentucky um those are like my two absolute favorite self-striping dyers um, as far as other yarn, oh Jesus, um, I have an awful lot of linen yarn from Claudia Hand Paints mm -hmm. because I just love, 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 love her color scents. Um, have I made anything from it yet? No, it's all just sitting on the shelves. Um, I don't know. That's a, you know, that's a hard question to answer. Do so I'm not going to answer it. Um, do you watch YouTubers? And if so, do you have a favorite personality that you follow? I used to be a huge, huge podcast watcher of, of people like knitters and crafters and things. And probably about two years ago, I kind of just dwindled way down on my watching time because I wasn't getting work done. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I would like see all the new things and I'm like, oh, I need to cast that on. I need to go buy yarn for this. I need to go buy that pattern. And I was just like, you know what? I need to stop. But I still do enjoy watching certain people. Um, the Bakery Bears, Dan and Kay Jones, they're out of the UK. I still find their personality, their show, their content, everything they do, I love. And um and you know they're a little quirky at times but you know what what uk people are not quirky um but i really do enjoy them i used to enjoy the grocery girls a lot um and um i really don't watch them that much anymore um god who else do i watch um on occasion i watch um a couple of my friends um daniella caffeinated gert she has a new a podcast again ca um, crafting caffeinated crafting or something um and she's up there in um cookville tennessee um and christy knows her um and then my friends robin and mary um they're here in louisiana not too far from me um there there's this cherry pearls um the cherry pearls podcast i think that's the name of it I maintain a pretty much a Monday through Friday regular work schedule, like a routine. Um, if I didn't have the routine, I probably would get nothing done. So, you know, when other people in your, you know, life work outside of the home, usually, you know, they work a nine to five. Well, you know, I'm, I'm more of a, you know, morning to early evening person. That's when my production time is the best. Once six o'clock hits, I nosedive, I crash, I, you know, I'm done. My brain turns off. So I usually am not, I don't work into the wee hours of the morning or the night. And um, I, I, I will say that sometimes I do work probably more than I should, like Saturdays and Sundays when I really shouldn't be. But lately I have not been the last two weeks in a row. I've taken Saturday and Sunday off completely and knit. And um, I've been doing, um, um, what do you call this? Um, like this, Zoom and Google Hangouts with friends knitting and just chatting and doing, and that's what I've been doing on the weekends, and I've been really enjoying that. Mm. 
my current favorite spot is my living room right near my my front windows of my uh, house and it's the best light during the morning and the and the early afternoon um and i usually have an iced coffee or coffee of some sort cuz coffee is my thing my my habitual habit um and i that's where i knit now um I, you know, I kept saying I'm going to clean my craft room, my yarn storage room, aka second bedroom of my house. Um, that's yet to be done. And it's been how many weeks since this all started? And it's like, I have no excuse. But, you know, like everything else, it can wait. Where's your favorite place outside of the home? Do you like have a favorite yarn store that you like to go to and hang out with? The you know, and the, uh, the, um, the only thing, honestly, we do have a local yarn store here in New Orleans. It's in the French Quarter, but it's not, it's very much geared towards the tourists that come into town. Mm -hmm. um, there isn't really a space in there for us to gather. Um, and it's also hard to get to and park there. Um, but we do, I do have an, a weekly knit group um, and we meet at a local coffee shop. And there's about six to eight of us that gather every week. Um, so we've, we've moved on. We currently are doing, you know, the online thing, but, um, yeah, that's my group. So that's the, those are the people, those are my knitting people here locally is, you know, this group of six to eight ladies and me. It's been fun. We've got, a, it was an hour program. Thank you. Happy day. I didn't think I was going to have enough to fill it up, but we did. And <laughs> of course, you know, we have some of the bags I show you in our shop. You can go to whimsystitches.com. And so uh, before we get started, show them, I don't know if it's going to be a pain for you, but show them just the different sizes of bags that you have. And what you do. Really? Did you really think I was that prepared? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't pull every size, but... Um, I have clear bags. This is my small clear bag. And everybody and, loves, loves those. Yes. And I have this also in medium size, but I don't have a whole lot of them in the shop. But mm -hmm. any, you know, anything, anybody can always message me about a bag or fabric or, and I want it in this size and we can work that out. Because right now production on bags has pretty much gone to, um, until things kind of clear up a little bit and I have a little more oomph to have energy to do all that kind of stuff. Um, but there is a bunch of stuff in the shop now. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of bags in the shop right now. Um, clear, small, these are two new prints. These are like yarn balls in kind of muted colors. And this, of course, bright colors, you know, I love bright color stuff. And then I've got spring kind of patterns as well, florals, well, I like tulips. the yellow one. Yes, isn't this a cute one? Mm -hmm. and I, I think I have a couple notions bags in this too, but there's lots of clear bags Don't of that too. Don't and then there's pictures. then there's of course our umbrellas because you know spring showers. Or so there's live in East Tennessee, blue. where where the new Seattle. Uh huh. And then a couple other. This is another knitting pattern thing that I have, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be releasing more fabrics. Would you in ever the make future. those clear bags in a bigger size? The, in these um, in these mm -hmm. patterns or these fabrics, it depends on what fabric I have oh, available. The, the black, the plastic kind. Yeah, I like well, the plastic I do, kind, but I'd like a bigger one because I need. That's the only thing that keeps me honest with all my projects. Uh -huh. Well, the what's how many how many skeins of the yarn do you want to fit in the bag? Oh, I don't know, two or three projects worth. <laughs> oh, two or three projects. Okay. That's see that's that would be a jumbo size and I do yes. jumbo size clear on a on a custom basis. So basically okay. you can you I work with you. I we go back and forth on fabric choices and then I develop it and sew it for you and get it out the door. It's just too I know difficult for us your jumbo bags are very popular. Yes, I know. You guys love my super, super jumbo size. And if I don't kill myself on this, that's that's the large. I have one, lar I have know, one larger than this. that. I'll be he back. Did these for us where we were going to have a tea. And we did have a tea. We had a tea party. So we had these made. It was for the Downton Abbey movie premiere. 
Okay, I'm coming back with bigger sizes because I didn't pull them earlier. Put the lamp back. I think we pretty much have everybody now. Okay, this is the medium size clear. So this will do two to three skeins of yarn easily in mm -hmm. here, but not three projects. This is really meant for maybe well, two maybe, projects. Maybe when we're done, we'll talk about a custom bag that's bigger. Absolutely. So, <laughs> but my biggest bag, of course, is the jumbo zipper tote bag. So this is the one that fits oh. multiple projects in it, just not clear. Okay, does it have a pocket on the inside? It has two pockets. On one side, it, one side is a slip-in um, pattern pocket, so you can slip in an eight and a half by eleven pattern easily without folding Ooh. it, and it'll fit vertically. And then on the other side, it's hard to see, but there is a zippered Notions pouch, which it's pretty deep, so it's more than just Notions pouch. You can put a phone in there, a tablet, you know, a small tablet, not a huge one. I like it. But, Lunch, you know. Um, I don't have a whole lot of these in the shop right now. There's a lot, there's a bunch cut out already for sewing that hasn't happened yet. So well, that's okay. going to happen. Well, let's, let's get to the fun part. And then Go when you guys want to ask questions, you can ask different ones. But for my own personal question, I wanted to ask about a big plastic bag because I, <laughs> if I can't see it, I'm not going to do it. That's just it. Can't see it, I'm not going to do it. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> 